Hi, it's Mike Stiles from Brand Content Studios. Here's the content marketing quickie for the week ending June 18th. I've been a squeaky wheel for three years about the obsession with engagement and how engagement is defined on social. It's as if if someone doesn't click or like or comment or share, that means they didn't like or value what they saw. There's no way that can be true, but the industry kept adopting those engagement metrics. When you like a show on TV, do you hug your TV or kiss the screen? No, you just enjoy it. So the news that Facebook is tweaking the news feed algorithm to factor in how much time users spend with a story is validating, but they don't just measure time. After all, some people have a slow connection. It's comparative to the time that user spends with stories overall. That's how they determine the winners. Google continues to expand Google Preferred, this time into the MENA region. It's an advanced channel packaging thing for YouTube so media agencies can get to the eyes they want and the channels those eyes tend to like. The preference score ranks channels that make it to the top 5% of all YouTube channels. For instance, Pepsi and Procter & Gamble signed on to access the best channels for them during Ramadan. The Google Preferred lead in MENA says, We've heard from brands who want to better understand what content they're buying their advertising against. We also heard from creators who want to be rewarded for creating engaging content. Google Preferred's been in the U.S. for two years. You know what's cool is when you take a platform and try to think of ways to use it that haven't been done before. Whether or not it works, it's still cool because it's innovative experimentation, right? Well, author Jason Sperling's going to release his book June 25th completely on Instagram. I hear you. How's that supposed to work? Well, the book, which is titled Look at Me When I'm Talking to You, will get uploaded one page at a time for 160 days. The book is, appropriately, about how to get attention in a world that's mostly jaded and apathetic. Seriously, getting you people to care about this podcast is a heavy lift. Not books, but magazines have been tried on Instagram. Valentine's Whiskey with Work Club put W on its feed where you can click an image to get to each issue. If I were an advertiser, I'd want a deal where I only paid for ads that did me some actual good. No risk, all reward. That's what I want because I'm an unreasonable businessman. But Source Knowledge is saying, okay, we'll fix it so we only get paid if your video ad does what you want it to do. Get a click, get a sale, sign up for something, whatever. The platform is called Engage, and it knows over half of videos and digital ads aren't ever seen by people, so they're cutting us a break with this performance-based stuff, which has not been as available for video ads as it's been for other kinds of digital ads. CEO Patrick Hoff says billing is based on steps the user takes, and the final bill is kind of a hybrid. The performance metrics have to be hit, then CPMs enter the picture. How does it feel to be such a hot property? Because if you're the real deal in content marketing, you are a hot property. A hard-to-find kind of talent in a field that's absolutely booming. So how do you get matched up with the right employer? Well, you won't find them on Tinder, so the esteemed Content Marketing Institute launched a new content marketing career center. Doesn't matter if you're starting out or a C-suiter, you can find a gig. Or if you're a company, you can find your content marketing superstars In the areas of content production, content strategy, social content management, UX design, video editing, that stuff. Founder Joe Polizzi says content marketing talent is in high demand these days, and he's right. I probably wouldn't even be telling you about this if I weren't already employed. You can get the content job tweets by following at CMI Content Jobs. The Frameworks is launching The Frameworks Tilt. It's nothing like the Tilted Kilt restaurants. It's a play that poses the philosophical question, what if short format isn't all it's cracked up to be and there's business value to be had with long-form content? Frameworks founder Terry Brissenden says Tilt is about finding the small changes or details that can help shift perspectives in this bite-sized, fast-paced world of ours. Long-form content allows brands to articulate the full depth of their stories. But will users want to invest the time to get all that depth? And how can you get them to want to? I don't know. All I know is Tilt will be led by Shanky Das, who used to be the VP Creative Development at Turner, and I like saying Shanky Das. Every once in a while, you see something that makes you wonder if running a website that gets great engagement is even worth it. The European Court of Human Rights upheld an earlier court decision that essentially says sites can be liable for things readers post in comments. Why? Well, the court says it's because publishers should know in advance which stories they publish will result in bad comments. In the case, the first court said even if a site uses an automated system that takes down comments after people complain, it could still be liable because, again, it should have seen the future and known what the comments were going to be. 
On appeal, the bigger court acknowledged freedom of expression is interfered with by the ruling, but that that's necessary in a democratic society. Silly brands, you talk yourselves breathless about how to get people to interact with you on Facebook, and then when they do, you completely and totally ignore them. LocoWise just did a study, and 87% of posts to brands' Facebook pages were never answered at all in any way. And that's if the brand lets fans post at all, which only 51% studied do. Okay, if I were trying to make excuses for brands, I'd say you can't possibly expect them to respond to all those posts. Most, 67%, got less than 10 posts in the studied month of May, so they can't handle nine a month. LocoWise offered some advice, which is, look, if you're not going to respond like ever, just disable the feature. Don't let people post to your timeline. Everybody's doing it, so AOL didn't want to be the oddball. They have opened a brand content studio and are now in the business of making ads for marketers. It's called Partner Studio, which doesn't come as an earth shatterer since their parent company, Huffington Post, has HuffPost Partner Studio that does the same thing. Why are companies like AOL and the New York Times and CNN and Tumblr, and I could go on and on, going this route? Well, it certainly doesn't hurt the publisher-advertiser relationship. Plus, eMarketer reports U.S. advertisers are expected to drop $4.3 billion this year on native ads. That's up 34%. AOL CMO Ali Klein says, We see this as that next high-growth sector in the industry. With all the news aggregators we're starting to see today, maybe it's time to pay homage to one of the granddaddies of them all, Pulse. Pulse has been around since 2010 and has belonged to LinkedIn since 2013. But they're not acting like a granddaddy. They just did a major overhaul of their iOS and Android apps. That's right, granddaddy put some hair color on. Here's what's new. It's got some of that swipe left to reject and swipe right to save action. And it gives you news based on your LinkedIn professional graph rather than counting on you to find what you like and add the feed. Pulse co-founder Akshay Kathari says, We felt our device processing speeds are getting better, and simply optimizing the aggregation and reading was hard to keep compelling. No ads yet, and they're not sure how they'll surface ads on Pulse, but they'll be there eventually. So continuing on how people get their news digitally themed, the Reuters Institute just revealed that in the U.S., online is the main source of news at 43%, over TV at 40%, and newspapers at 5%. And while you can cry for newspapers, don't do so quite yet for TV. Despite Brian Williams, TV is still seen as the best source for accuracy, beating online 36 to 30 percent. Only 32 percent trust the media in general, so you can imagine how many trust your brand implicitly. A growing number, now at 26 percent, get their news mainly on their smartphones. But video news is not growing. And here are the reasons users give for that. I find reading more convenient, I like to watch on a bigger screen, and pre-roll ads put me off. If marketers damage the experience, there is a price to pay for that. In fact, news consumers feel so deluged by digital advertising, 47% regularly use ad blocking. But if you think they'll subscribe to ad-free news, forget it. 67% say they wouldn't pay to access digital news no matter what the price was. And that's the way it is. Commercial real estate loves content. At least CBRE Group does. They're launching Blueprint, an online magazine they're producing in-house with Group SJR. The target audience is commercial real estate investors, businesses that buy and lease property, and people just generally interested in business. CMO Paul Suchman said some things the rest of us probably need to hear. One, for our brand to be considered world-class, we must become known as a company that consistently delivers intellectual capital and thought value to our clients. Two, they're measuring success by audience size, how they're engaging, and if they ask to keep getting the content. Those are fair assessments for content. And he says Blueprint tells the real estate story, not the CBRE story. Way, way, way too many brand content marketers are driving to tell their story and neglect the bigger topic picture. That's it. The transcript is at brandcontentstudios.com.